she should make one of those TikToks where it's like, we're from South Dakota. We shoot dogs in the head when they don't do what you want. We're from South Dakota. Of course we go to Culver's. <laughs> we're from South Dakota. No, we don't castrate our goats. <laughs> Welcome back to Nano Dosing. What's up? It's Tuesday. It's April 30th. All right, we're back. We're back on Nano Dosing. It's Tuesday. It's good to see you guys. We got Arian remote. We got Big T here in studio, Mad Dog McKenzie behind the glass. And uh, right off the bat, there's a story I want to jump into over the weekend because I'm shocked that none of you guys had read about this, had heard about the, uh, the governor of South Dakota, Christy Noem. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And her dog story. You guys have not heard the story, correct? I, I heard the I, name. I've heard about it. But okay. I, did, I, I did not know the story until you told me this morning. Okay, so a little bit of a background on her. She is the governor of South Dakota. She is um, apparently on the short list to be Trump's VP. I don't know if she is anymore. Knowing Trump, he might be like, uh, this is disgusting. I can't deal with this woman. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen from all this. But she's writing a book. It's called... No going back, the truth on what's wrong with politics, how we move America forward. This is going to have nothing to do with her politics. This is actually, actually, you know what? She's a Republican that I think Arian Foster might get behind. I think, yeah. I think this policy might appeal <laughs> to you specifically. Yeah. Look, at, look at you, Arian, gone from supporting Bernie to donating to Billy. He could to, donate to a, another Republican. Yeah, now. this might be the second <laughs> one. Arian might have been red-pilled. That's crazy. So she had a dog named Cricket. It was a wire-haired pointer. A stupid fucking name. For I was a dog. just gonna say bad name to start. You by don't, the way, you don't like naming dogs after other animals. I mean, it depends. I don't know that or, if, if there's one that sport. works. Sport. Cricket. Oh, or a sport. Cricket. Yeah, good point. Oh. Good point. I don't know <laughs> if she named this dog. This she got it from a breeder. So I mean, do you like that name? I don't particularly like the name. Uh, right. So we all agree. Bad now, name. Crickets would have been a good name. How do you figure? I just like, I like plural nouns for dogs. Okay. Like biscuits. Or peaches. Mm. Or peaches. But this dog, I think it was probably named by the by the breeder. She got it from a breeder and it was supposed to be a hunting dog. They took the dog on a pheasant hunting trip, which is big in South Dakota. In fact, there's a bunch of kennels out there. I had a friend, uh, Hard Factor Will, when he was a kid, his family would get labs and they liked to go hunting. And they would send them to South Dakota to train them on how to being how to be a hunting dog. It's like a big thing to help for uh, for pheasant hunting up there. So apparently, Cricket, this fourteen year old or fourteen month old, was a female, and she had an aggressive personality. They took it on a pheasant hunting trip. The dog went out of its mind with excitement, and was just sprinting around trying to grab every bird. Just being being a nuisance of a dog apparently on this trip, and then on the way back. Uh, she stopped and she was talking to a family and they had chickens and Cricket went around trying to bite all the chickens. It's unclear if Cricket was actually killing the chickens or if she was just biting at them, grabbing them, tossing them to the ground, then biting the next one, tossing it to the ground. I don't know if the chickens died or not. Anyways, she went to grab Cricket and the dog tried to bite her. And she said, I hated that dog. The dog was dangerous to anyone she came in contact with and less than worthless as a hunting dog. I realized I had to put her, put her down. So she took this dog to the gravel pit before her kids got home from school. Arian's giddy as a school girl. He loves this. So it's, it's just so like breaking news. Dog does dog shit. And she's fucking like flabbergasted. Like, yeah, you... You, you you let dogs do dog things and they're going to do dog things. Like, so silly. So she it's so silly. She can't wait for this next part. Takes the dog to the gravel pit and then shoots it with a shotgun. Oh, bang. Yep. Told you. He was he was just waiting. <laughs> That's what it is. You know, I didn't do it. You'd be mad at her. She also killed a goat. Uh, but she said that in, when she killed a goat doing it the same way, the goat moved at the last second. So she just wounded the goat. And then she had to run up to it. And she had to double tap the goat. So the goat smarter than the dog. That's what I heard. <laughs> To do this, you're evil, just to start out with. To write about it and be like, look at this story that shows what a good leader I am, you're batshit insane 
and like really stupid. Yeah, it is stupid. She said she was trying to prove a point that sometimes life is difficult, messy, and ugly. And but sometimes <laughs> you have to do those things in order to sometimes you have to be willing to tap into that side of yourself in order to get shit done. And <laughs> in South Dakota, sometimes life isn't easy. Case in point, I had to shoot my puppy. If there's, if there's Crazy. one there is one bipartisan view in the Democrat and Republican Party especially amongst her white constituents, they fucking love dogs. This was a horrible chess move on her part. Bad chess move. Bad chess. You remember Mitt Romney talked about just strapping his dog to a roof of, of his car because his dog had diarrhea on a road trip, so he tied the crate to the roof of the car, and the dog was just <laughs> shitting itself while they were driving down the highway. People got, people got big mad about that. That is like more like goofy, what the fuck are you thinking? Holy shit, I can't believe you did that. Uh, this is just like evil this is don't shoot dogs seems like politics 101 and if you do shoot a dog don't brag about it don't brag about it now i i will also say i found um i found the actual text of the book she does say that the dog was grabbing the chickens crunching it to death with one bite then dropping it to attack another so yeah. apparently this dog killed at least one chicken and uh, she said that Cricket absolutely ruined the hunt that, that they were on, going out of her mind with excitement, chasing all those birds and having the time of her life. This just sounds to me like she didn't train her dog right. Yeah, you're a shitty dog owner. Yeah. And you should, if, if, you're, if you need this to be a hunting dog or whatever, and it just, there's an old phrase, that dog won't hunt, send it to be a dog somewhere else. Yeah. Most breeders will take, if you, if you get a specifically bred dog, they will take the dog back if it's a good breeder. If it's like a backyard factory farm for for pets, sometimes they won't. If it's like a breeding mill, but a good breeder would take the dog back. You can also send it somewhere to be trained. Right. You can you can hire somebody to train your dog. Uh, you can just not take the dog on hunts. But yeah, she said that I hated that dog. It was untrainable, less than worthless as a hunting dog. It was not a pleasant job, but it had to be done. And after it was over, I realized another unpleasant job needed to be done. She owned a, ma a male goat that was nasty and mean. It wasn't castrated. Maybe there's a way that you could have fixed that. Maybe you could just cut its balls off. Furthermore, the goat smelled disgusting, musky, and rancid. Loved to chase Gnome's children, knocking them down and ruining their clothes. <laughs> She killed the goat the same way she had just killed Cricket the dog, but though she dragged him to a gravel pit, the goat jumped as she shot, therefore survived the wound. Noam says she went back to her truck, got another shell, then hurried back to the gravel pit and put him down. This sounds like a woman who just shouldn't be around animals. Yeah, she, I mean, I mean, it's coming from me. She sounds a bit psychotic. Like I don't, I, I don't like dogs, but I'm not, I don't. I'm not gonna go out of my way to shoot one in the back of head. Well, you've made inside. some comments. You've made some I'm comments. I'm not gonna shoot no dog, bro. You have said that you've. Uh, I'll, I'll. I don't know when it was. It. Yeah, years, let's do that. Years well, ago now, but you've said like if a dog ever attacks me, I will absolutely dome piece it. Okay, what, so what you, you would about? kill a dog. Yes, but I'm. I, that's going out of your way to execution style shoot a dog yes, after no he i does agree different the situations most dog shit ever by wanting to gnaw on chickens that's hilarious to me but i'm not going let's if somebody i have the right to defend myself don't i big t yes all right so if a motherfucker coming at me he will get dome piece for sure if i got the burner on me standard standard ground against <laughs> a puppy right well, i was, I was outraged from that you know what i'm saying <laughs> did y'all see her statement she doubled down yeah i have i have the statement right here she said I can understand why some people are upset about a 20-year-old story of Cricket, one of the working dogs at our ranch in my upcoming book, No Going Back. The book is filled with many honest stories of my life, good and bad days, challenges, painful decisions, lessons learned. What I learned from my years of public service, especially leading South Dakota through COVID, is people are looking for leaders who are authentic, willing to learn from the past, and don't shy away from tough challenges. My hope is anyone reading this book will have an understanding that I always work to make the best decisions I can for the people in my life. The fact is, South Dakota law states that dogs who attack and kill livestock can be put down. Given that Cricket had shown aggressive behavior towards people by biting them, I decided what I did. Whether running the ranch or in politics, I have never passed on my responsibilities to anyone else to handle. Even if it's hard and painful, I followed the law and was being a reasonable parent, dog owner, and neighbor. <laughs> As I explained in the book, it wasn't easy, but often the easy way isn't the right way. She made it about the law. She made it as a lawful move I was doing. 
Now, yeah. Republicans out there, I'm just letting you know, a Democrat would never. We had Major going crazy, biting everybody. We didn't put him down, did we? That's true. Yeah, Joe just, Biden. Just saying, maybe Joe Biden saying. could learn a lot from Christy Noem about how, how to handle his dog. Uh, <laughs> the, the fact that it's a 14-month-old puppy. Like, that's still a puppy. That's right when a dog can learn new shit. Like she just eight years and some change. Are they still puppies? Yeah, yeah. When, like, when is it no longer a puppy? I would say yeah. that it's still a puppy about a year and a half, two years. Okay. They still have that, like, they're still learning. I mean, that's like having a seven year old kid. Is that that? I, I didn't want to say it because is that true? The seven year old. The well, seven they dog, live dog like years? a seventh as long. So you just dog ears generally, you take okay. it as seven times, whatever. Okay. So seven year old, seven year old kid. Yeah, I read this story to Blake last night. That was his bedtime story. Because he was he was acting up. He grabbed my shoe and ran across the room. And I was like, Blake, I want you to come come meet the uh, governor of South Dakota. I think that this is a fun story that we can share. Or they could just always be like a scare tactic if he's fucking up. Like, we're going to South Dakota if you keep this up. Yeah. I feel <laughs> yep. very confident about Donald Trump's chances of winning the presidency. If he picks this woman to be his vice president... And he goes with the dog killer. I I will be. It's it feels like almost how this has to go. Okay, let me play devil's advocate. Yeah, she killed a dog, but think of how many chickens she saved, bro. I'm just saying. Nobody cares about chickens. That's crazy. See the double. I like my wow. chickens dead and fried. <laughs> I like my dogs alive. I feel you. I'm just saying. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah, That's I mean, in in Big T's mind, this dog this dog Cricket was actually like a great dog. It was just killing more chickens. Chickens, top two thing to kill. What's number one? I cow, know cow. This, yeah. You think a cow is number one? Yeah. Vivek would disagree with that. Okay. Yeah. What did Vivek say? Wait, is he is he Hindu? I don't know. Did you just make kind of a crazy no, it, assumption? No, I read I read yesterday. That I he, believe he is. I yeah. read yesterday that he was Hindu, I but it was not like a news article about him. So I I could be wrong about that. I, I'm. Almost certain I've heard him say before that okay. he is. It I, says on here that he is Hindu. Yeah, I, I thought so. Uh, but yeah, um, I don't think that Trump's going to choose her now. You I can't. I think that Trump is going to be like, this was this was a weird thing to share. And I think that she was trying to really do something with this. She was feeling herself. She thought this was a dub. She thought that this was a dub. This was showing her, her great leadership abilities. But I think this is something that people are getting united behind where it's like, no. No, we don't like you. Also, she's been doing this weird thing where she, I think she's getting like ad deals, like a like an influencer. I think she got cosmetic dentistry done. She got something else done too, where she's doing ads for companies as the governor of South Dakota. Which I don't know if there's anything expressly illegal about that, but it also points to maybe a future where all of her all of her leaders are influencers. Has any one person come out and been like, "Yeah, she did the right thing." Nobody wants to do that. I, I have not heard anybody coming to a defense about this. Did she do the right thing? Of course not. Yeah, you train that dog. Train, train it, that. get rid of it. Yeah, you try. You hire somebody to... From a non-dog lover, that, that did seem a little premature to just off him because he was killing chickens. It seemed a little, a little wild. Well, I think she was, she was upset with the dog because it was killing the chickens of a voter she had stopped to like meet with this family and then her dog gets out of the car and starts killing all their, all their livestock. And so I think she thought that this dog was a political liability. And so she so, turned herself into one. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think happened. But yeah. Hell of a logic. She Dude. probably got that guy's vote, but lost everybody else's. All right. So commander Biden has attacked probably I'd say seven times as many secret service agents as this <laughs> dog has attacked chickens. And Commander still rules the roost. Like they're like, we're not that dog has a right to life. Facts. Democrats yeah. are, are more pro life than than Gnome when it comes to their dogs. <laughs> yeah, tough, tough scene. And I don't think it's going down the way that she she thought that it was gonna go down. But it does and, seem and like she, she's she was on toxic. the she was on the nomination to be Trump's VP. She was allegedly on the short list for it, yeah. Because yeah, okay. she is she is one of those like she's like a fighter. She gets aggressive when dealing with the press, the media, Democrats, libs. She likes to attack. And so I think Trump liked that about her. Uh, that's that's obvious. 
Yeah, and she she like looks the part of somebody that Trump would want to nominate too. She's pretty attractive. I was just fixing to say, Arian, this looks like a woman you might um, find some interest in. Let me, let me, let I don't know how her. old she is. No, What's I think, her name again? What's I, her name? I think this lady is checking all the boxes. Christy Nome, N O E M. I think this is right in. Yep. Arian's going to love this woman. Kills dogs. Kills dogs. Fairly attractive. She is 52 years old. She looks incredible for 52. That, that is a nice looking 52 year old woman. I will tell you that right now. Now, listen, maybe we should hear her out. It is a little tougher <laughs> in South Dakota. Uh, with the livestock situation, you know everybody knows about that. I think I think we should give her a chance. Okay, I'll hear her out. Hear, hear her, her out. Sides. She uh, I, she should lean into that more. That excuse, like I live in South Dakota, things are really tough. She should make one of those TikToks where it's like, "We're from South Dakota. We shoot dogs <laughs> in the head when they don't do what you want." <laughs> We're from South Dakota. <laughs> of course we go to Culver's. <laughs> we're, we're from South Dakota. No, we don't castrate our goats. <laughs> That'd be cruel. <laughs> we're from South Dakota. We, sh we shoot our goats twice. <laughs> Double tap. But yeah, the, the, the whole I live in South Dakota, life is hard. Okay, lean into that. I guess I, I'd be pissed off too if thing. it was like zero degrees all the time. Everything would irritate me. This goat, this goat thing has got to be explained to me. Are goats aggressive? Yeah, but that's goats. Like if you have a goat that still has its nuts, it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit aggressive. It's gonna knock people down. It's gonna run into you. I'll be honest, I don't care that she killed the goat. Yeah. It's the dog. It's the dog. You can kill as many goats as you want. Justice for cricket. If she had written about how she killed a problematic goat, I'd be like, that's a leader willing to do what needs to be done. Yep. Dog uh, jail prison yeah, you're right and there is a difference too aaron because you should go to jail for that by the way the dog's your friend that's crazy that's crazy jail is crazy that she crazy. shot a perfectly fine dog in the head listen bro you cannot have double standards you can't yes you can yes you can you can be wait like, wait wait, wait. what's no, the no, double no, standard what's the double standard just off the goat that was all and off the dog that was killing chickens you are differentiating, and I know. I don't, please, despair where there's a they there's a mentions. domesticated nature it. of dogs that, that is, goats do I, not. That have. is an arbitrary line that you have drawn. Are you saying you that, that? I think everyone would agree with. There's that. a difference between That's stepping on an you, ant and and shooting your dog in the head. Just because you, as a whole, col collectively have decided this, does not make it morally correct. No, I'll, t I'll tell you why. This is, this is vegans. This is a, this is a. I'm not vegan. This is a vegan talking point. This is literally what they say. You are arbitrary drawing the line at dog, at cat. You're doing that. People, it makes you feel fuzzy inside, but in the eyes of objective morality, you are doing the exact same thing every single day when you eat lunch. Well, the answer to where is the line is always somewhere. There is a line. So yeah, yeah but, I, I draw it at dog. Hey, that's what's up. I'm just I'm just pointing out the hypocrisy in that. It's not I'm not upset at you. I understand why you feel funny about your dog or feel, you know, fuzzy about your dog. I get it. I understand it. I'm just the obvious hypocrisy is that you don't care about the other animals. But there are a subset of human beings that they use that as a talking point to not have any animal products. So, uh, to me, I think there is a difference because and it's not about the the animal itself. Yeah, I personally love dogs, and you probably shouldn't shoot one. No, I'll, I'll go one step further. You should not shoot a dog in the head unless it's attacking you or a family member or a human being. Um, but the fact that she had a personal relationship with this dog. Yeah, she's psycho. Which is, sure. it's different from like an ant that's on the street, and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. fuck that ant. You step on it. You're not That's feeding. A, you're not feeding this ant every day. You're not. You're not uh, rubbing its tummy. You're not curling up next to it on the couch or, no, you're doing a lot, or in you're your doing bed. A lot right now. But you're you doing have a per, like emotional no, appeal right now. But if you have an emotional connection with an animal, being able to just shoot it in the head tells me you're a psychopath. I don't disagree with that. I'm not advocating what she did. I'm yeah. just giving the other side of the argument, which is a blatantly obvious hypocrisy to me. It is hypocrisy, but I think it's okay. It's okay to be a hypocrite. We all are in some capacity. Yes. Uh, 
Mad Dog McKenzie, you have any input on on Kirsty Uh Yeah, no, it's bad shit that she she shot her dog. Like I, 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 there's really nothing else I can say. I and you were saying that she, it was supposed to be a hunting dog and it didn't turn. Out. I, look, I've got a hunt. She would have been a hunting dog at home. I'll, he's never killed anything in his life. I do not think that just because you got a dog for one thing and then they just turned out to be a nice cuddly love bug doesn't mean that they should be killed. I yeah. think I think hunting dogs that weren't hunting dogs are wonderful dogs. No matter if they can pick up your pheasants after you shoot them or not. Do you think that, right. do you think that she looked at this dog like a tool? Like no different than a tractor where it's like I have this dog uh, to help my ranch and the dog is not pulling its weight, so therefore I'm done with this dog. I I mean that seems to be the only logical explanation. Also maybe <laughs> Not to sh like not to shit on South Dakota. Maybe she has like, th did it say that she had like maybe she has like a dozen dogs that yeah. she all uses for hunting or like I don't know. Yeah, farm that, purposes. It's a possibility. And it she is like, okay, well, if this one isn't holding its weight, then I'm done with it. I'm, I started Fallout last night, which everyone told me to watch, and they do something like that in that show. Yeah, where it's like if the dog isn't pulling its weight, it's done. You, we do that with horses. We do that with a lot of different animals. Uh, I'm not Just saying that saying. I don't. The horses Just thing saying. always makes me sad too. Like when everyone talks about like if a horse doesn't do well at Kentucky Derby or something, and then it gets oft, like killed. Oft. That makes me yeah. sad. Like yeah, I, like, I just think that's kind of a rude thing to do. But again, I'm a soft, soft person. No, it is inhumane for sure. Yeah. I, I, well, and I'm also like, totally but our factory farming is also inhumane. Like right. the way we get food is wild. Have you ever seen somebody slaughterhouse? It's like. They literally hang cows upside down and gut him, and just, it's it's crazy. Like just live, just they like, screaming and yelling, separating them from the calves. It's wild, bro. It's just it's we don't see it because it's on our plate, but it is objectively inhumane the way we treat uh, factory farms. Yeah. yeah, no. Well, also, am I am I naive or do people actually use horses for glue? Uh they're they're right. hooves. The hooves of the horse. Used to make gelatin too. Hmm. Well, that's because pig hooves are used in gelatin as well. Yeah, actually, I don't know if it's the horse that's in that's in gelatin. Like if you get starburst or I know it's pig hooves at least. Or Wait, is this it... like Jello that you eat? Yeah, like gelatin. Yeah, I've look up where gelatin comes from. Wait, Jello is from pigs? I don't know if Jello. It's not like a pig is. product. I think if it gelatin. if it has pig hoof in it, it's a pig product. I don't know if it's Jello specifically that does that. Oh, it says. Oh, it's uh, that's fake news. Fake news by me. Fake news by me. Okay, but it's they they make gelatin by processing animal bones, oh, cartilage, wait. and skin. Yeah, so it's so, like extracts of it. Wait, so Jello is Ew. not a Jello is a animal product. I did not know this. Yep. Yeah, this is news to me. Yeah, wait, yeah. so can vegetarians eat Jello? So no, it's no. Yeah. Oh, shots? Why don't vegans eat gelatin? Because it's made from ground up shots. animal skin, bones, and tendons, and ligaments. Usually that means pigs or cows, but most kosher gelatin is made from fish parts. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Didn't I had that. no idea. Yeah. That should have been in the uh, secret formula ingredients. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I don't think it's a secret. I mean, I just don't think people like no. I don't I don't know if jello actually is is from the hooves of horses and all right. that stuff. It is it's gelatin. So there are vegan gelatin brands that exist. Yep. There is a list of animal free candy out there that PETA has. On that list, Airheads, Fireballs, Big League Chew. We've got uh the root beer barrels. We've got blow pops. Very underrated root beer barrels. They are very good, yeah. I also like the Coke bottle ones. Yeah. Those are good, too. We've got um, crybabies, dots, dum-dums. These are all things that don't contain animal products. Jolly Ranchers, Jolly Rancher lollipops, Jujubees, Juji Fruits. Uh, now and Laters, Pixie Sticks, Red Vines, Smarties, Sweet Fish, Super Bubble, Sweet Tarts, Twizzlers, and Zots, whatever Zots are. There's some really oh, good Zots. and really bad candies in there. There are. What's your least favorite candy? In that list or period? Period. Um, Those gummy bears Aaron talked about were not very good. That's crazy. It's, you're alone there. Um, 
I don't like least I don't know because I just wouldn't have it then. Um, I don't know. Airheads on that list, goaded. I could I could sit down and eat fifty airheads. Uh, sweet tarts or the big chewy sweet tarts, incredible. Yeah. Least favorite though, I don't know. I'll get back to you. Okay, I need to know that. Um, do you, are you teed off about anything? I'm teed off I about am. several things. Well, yeah. You go first. Oh, buddy. We talked a little bit about this when I was there, Big T, but they followed up and it pissed me the fuck off, dog. All right. LA Fitness. When I was uh, in the transition stage for my house, like I, I think it was like 2017, you know, 18. I didn't have, I didn't want to go all the way to the city to work out, right? So, um, it was about 2020. It was like when the pandemic hit. Um, the gym. There's a gym right over here, right close to my house. So I wanted to like have access to a gym. So I decided to sign up for LA Fitness. And it was cool. I ended up getting some gym equipment to put in my house. So I, I, I didn't really have to go anymore. But it was cool to have like a little gym. Like if I'm traveling and, you know, to California or New York or whatever case may be, there was like a gym I could go to with a membership, right? It was cool. So easy to sign up. Go there, you meet the people, they sign you up, boom. Now, I haven't gone in a long time. And I was like, you know, I, I, I started to do some, some cleanup, some house cleanup on like all the things I'm subscribed to, right? Which I advise people to do because I, you forget about how much shit you subscribe to after a while. And so just residually, they was getting $50 a month from me. And I was like, you know, I, I don't use it that much anymore. It's time for me to cancel my subscription. I spent like 30 minutes on a website trying to figure out how to cancel my subscription. There's no button to click. There's no, you cannot do it. You ask them to do it. They're like, well, you gotta, you gotta come in person. Uh, you gotta, you gotta talk to the manager. You gotta, you gotta, like all this shit. They made me jump through hoops. Like there's nobody I can talk to. You can talk to customer service. They won't just do it over the phone. You can't, there's no button. There's no page. I was heated. Right. Cause it was so easy to sign up. And so finally I was like, fuck y'all. That, that credit card that I had, I just had them. Uh, Amex is really good at like, and maybe at all banks are, but like if you could just be like, okay, don't let them have a residual payment for this, mm -hmm. right? So I just cut them off at the source. The day I do that, the next day, I'm getting texts, emails, talking to me, hey, we can't process your payment. Yeah, now these motherfuckers are extremely communicative. And now these, and now they just, now they just, now they care about my business and they care about, but before I couldn't get anybody on the phone. Mm hmm and it's like, it's the most predatory shit ever. At them. Fuck them. At, what is it, LA Fitness? Fucking unreal, dog. It's unreal. It's predatory as shit. You know, what, you know what I think I think they do is, well, this is actually a good tip if you ever need to get somebody on the phone, especially if it's at, like, hypothetically an internet service company or a cable service company, uh, you select the option of, like, cancel my account. DirecTV, this works too. Like, I'd like to cancel my account on the automated line. And then they send you to somebody whose job it is to basically give you a discount and try to keep you around. You can always talk to somebody so much faster if that's the option. My parents bought a car in like 2010, probably. And it came with like a year of Sirius XM. Yeah. And then those every single year, my dad would call and be like, hey, we're canceling. And they're like, uh, actually, we'll give it to you for like 75% off. And he's like, fine. Yeah, And just every year, if anyone out there is paying full price for satellite radio, you need to call them and tell them that you're going to cancel and they'll give it to you practically for free. Yeah. My mom did the same thing. She had like a reminder in her phone to be like, okay, like it's renewing, call them. And they'd be like, <laughs> yeah, we can give a few for, for like $10, like just literally any discount they will give you. Yeah. I used to do that every summer with DirecTV back in like the late 2000s, early 2010s. I would call up every summer and be like, yeah, I'd like to cancel my subscription, please. And they'd be like, okay, well, you still owe like 180 bucks on this. Uh, is there something that we can work with you? What's not working out for you? And I'd always play hardball and see how big of a discount I could get on the NFL Sunday ticket. <laughs> and so one year I ended up getting that Sunday ticket for free. We are like, we'll give you the Sunday ticket, sir. Because I'd call back like four times, like, I'm really going to do it. I'm really going to do it this time. <laughs> so like, how do you like free football, sir? I was like, that sounds pretty good. I think I could stick around. So then week one comes around, no problem, because everybody gets Sunday ticket week one. 
week two comes around, no games on at game time. I call him back and I'm like, what's going on here? You guys told me that you would give me free Sunday ticket. And the guy's like, we have no record of that conversation ever happening, sir. And then they had me because they knew that I wanted my Sunday ticket and I was going to pay for it. And I ended up getting like a $20 discount on it or something. They, they absolutely abused me on that. Yeah. But all they have to they do is just say, right there. we got no record of saying that. And what are you going to like? Uh, I wish I had recorded that phone call. So they, they get you. But Jim's. It's just, it's just predatory though, though. Back to my LA finish. It's just, it's so, it's such bad business dog. Where it's just like, why as a human being would you want to operate in that capacity, dog? Or you, were you, were you trying your best to have not, to not let people have the option? Because for ninety percent of people, it works. I hate it. I hope someone shoots their dog. That's crazy. I, I, I took it too far. I took it too far. Okay. But they, they hate when you cancel gym memberships. Sometimes some companies have you send like a certified letter. You have to go to the post office, wait in line get somebody to ring it up through the system. So it's got tracking and all that shit on there. They make it very, very hard. It's wild though. So unnecessary. I think I have three teed offs. Okay. You let's go, let's go furthest back to most current. Um, so we talked last week about the, the first overall pick in the NFL draft and how it should, yep. you should get one second. Did you see the phone call between the bears GM and Caleb Williams? Yep. Where he said they told me to take at least five minutes. They yep. presumably being the NFL. Mm -hmm. Outrageous yep. jail jail time for people. Yeah, <laughs> they're trying. They're trying to make it a spectacle. They're trying to Crazy. sell commercials. They're Crazy. To, I I had a lot of people because I I posted that video of you, Big T, where you're like, this is something that pisses me off to no end. And then everyone's like, tell me you don't understand how marketing works without telling me you don't understand how marketing works. Yeah, no, I I understand perfectly clear yeah that five minutes of airtime for the chicago bears is increasing the value of the bears brand apparently somehow right by some metric yeah. now if if there's like a real one two neck and neck race for who's gonna go number one and nobody knows then take all the entire 10 give them 20 minutes yeah then that'd be fascinating it would be yeah. but like we've known who this was gonna be for eight months um all sec secondly this happened about 20 minutes after that. Uh, the Falcons just drafted another quarterback, eighth overall. Um, I've seen, now that it's been four days, however long it's been, I've seen the think pieces being like, actually, this was a good idea. It wasn't. Um, no. <laughs> actually, the the best take I saw on it, and this I may be the first person to ever say this, was Nick Wright, who was like, they're doing this to avoid being terrible rather than trying to be really good. Yeah. Because now you know whatever happens, you've got a second, you've got a ace in the hole at quarterback. Um, but you could have made your team way better for this year. Yeah. We we talked to, to Peter Schrager from uh, Fox NFL Network, and he said that the worst place that a team can be is in quarterback purgatory, which is true. That stinks when you have a quarterback that's just good enough to give you a little bit of hope, but maybe make the playoffs – but not bad enough to get a good pick where you can get a really good quarterback. But if you're if you're even having that conversation, aren't you just admitting that the guy you spent a hundred eighty million? Correct. The Falcons on, may have just signed that guy. Yeah, that you're essentially saying like Kirk Cousins is the king of purgatory. Right. Which I've you might not be wrong if you say that, but then maybe don't give that guy over a hundred million guarantee. You could have just if if you were so sold on Penix, which apparently they were. I I read that 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 was the only quarterback they would have drafted there. They wouldn't have taken McCarthy or Knicks. Then you just draft him, and tr you could have traded up if you really wanted Penix so bad. And yeah. th he's already twenty four. He'll be twenty four this week. Like you, you don't have two, three, four years for him to sit around. Right. Despite what Terry Fontenot said, that that would be amazing if he was able to sit for four years. Um. Anyway, so that that is what it is. Yeah, he said after they drafted him, they're like, if he doesn't play for four years, that's a good problem to have because that means we've had success at quarterback. I'm like, it's really not. Uh, mm -hmm. It means you completely wasted a – also, if he sits for four years, I don't know if Terry Fontenot knows this, you won't be the GM anymore. So <laughs> kind of not a good problem to have for you. Yeah, you have to see what you have at some point. Over the next couple of years, like yes. he's a first round top 10 pick. You need to see if he's a great quarterback or not. Big yeah. T, is this going to be an increasing 
happenstance where guys are going to be a lot older when they exit college. I because think of NIL. I think in the in the next so this upcoming year I think is the last year that the COVID year is still applicable. Mm -hmm. So I think it will be guys will maybe come back for be a year older than you'd anticipate, but not these guys being twenty four and twenty five. Like gotcha. that I think is specific to this five year window. Got you. Okay. I mean he's twenty four, which like you'll see more twenty two year olds. Yeah. Than twenty one, so. but like. 24 yeah i think this and bo nix i think is also 24. so uh, walk me through your emotions that you went through on thursday night when you found out that the falcons were doing this well i thought stephen shea had was either playing a prank on me or he had been pranked and like big cat had told him that it was going to be Penix and they were messing with him yeah. i didn't even consider that it was in the realm of possibility then we had roddy white on who one of my all-time favorite players and he was like fired up for it. And I was like, don't, don't yell at Roddy White. Don't say that this is a bad <laughs> idea to Roddy White. And then, and then it happened. And I was like, I was just, I was so stunned. I didn't even know. I, I, it did not enter my brain that that was a possibility. So then I was what, kind what, of mad. What was the anticipatory pick from Falcons fans? Like, what did, what, what did An you An edge mean? rusher was where every single, person had mocked to the Falcons, either Dallas Turner or Latu from UCLA. Got you. Who ended up, uh, Latu ended up being the first defensive player taken, I think 15th overall. And the Colts GM was like laughing, his, literally laughing his ass off that the best defensive player in the draft, they got at 15. Um, wow. Listen, I hope it works. I hope Michael Penix is awesome. Yeah, and if it does work, if Cousins gets hurt, Penix steps in this year, next year, crushes it you might see teams trying to do a copycat well listen i've said forever if you were a team in like the bear situation this year need a quarterback you have one and nine overall yeah it would not be the craziest thing in the world if they had drafted caleb williams and michael Penix. yeah it would be kind of crazy it would be very crazy but i think it more or less crazy than what the falcons did uh probably Probably less crazy. I agree. Because with Cousins, you guaranteed him all this money. Right. And it's obviously going to fuck with Cousins. It was funny how everybody at, at, at the time was like, I, how is Kirk Cousins doing? Is Kirk okay? Like, this seems really mean to, to do this. <laughs> yeah, and then his agent is putting out into the media. They're like, oh, we didn't hear about it till they were on the clock. Yeah. He's upset, whatever. It's a whole thing. Um, <laughs> it's a very Falcons thing. <laughs> oh, it was... Th th there is one team in professional sports who could have done this. So when Fontenot was talking to Arthur Blank in the war room, you saw that clip. Yes. That seemed to be a man explaining to his boss why he did a crazy thing. It why definitely it actually did, makes sense. but that pick does not happen without Arthur Blank signing off on it explicitly. Yeah, did I say Arthur Smith or say Blank? I think you said Blank. Okay, yeah, I, get, I, I screw that up all the time. But yeah, I, you're probably right. You probably would have to run that by the owner i would go so far as to say it i would anticipate it was put forth by the owner yeah for something now terry Fontenot seemed at least publicly to be all on board with it so yep who knows it's just it's it's the falcons i try not to get too <laughs> caught up in emotionally and what they're doing what if it works though it might work well, in order for it to work, you need something to go wrong. You need, yeah, you need something to go wrong with your your big investment that you have in Kirk Cousins because I don't think there's any chance over the course of the season he's going to be getting reps with number twos. I don't think there's any chance that he looks so good in practice if they have a winning. There's record. There's no chance. There's zero chance you put Penix in if you have a winning record, right? Yeah. No. Probably zero chance that he gets in in the first half of the season, regardless. If your team sucks and you've got you know, two wins in November, then if you think Penix looks good, you put Penix in, but then now you've got Kirk Cousins on the books for a fuckload of money, and they, it's a whole mess. They have to play, well, they don't have to play him, they have to keep Cousins for at least two years, and then they could cut him after the second one. This, You know what this is? It's This is the biggest indictment of Desmond Ritter possible. Oh, yeah. yeah it's no. saying, and like, he we're so scarred from having this guy as our quarterback 
that we are going to do something crazy in the draft so we assure ourselves we never have to deal with a Desmond Ritter situation again. And in fairness, the the one uh, kudos, I guess, I will give the front office, Desmond Ritter was that atrocious. He was that awful to do something this drastic. So I almost understand it Yeah, because watching him was shocking. It, he was so bad, it wasn't even like it was awe-inspiring. Like, you weren't even mad anymore. It wasn't his fault. Ever, it was the coach's fault Yeah, for still putting him out there. Uh, yeah, there was that one game where he fumbled the ball on the one-yard line twice. You remember again, that? Again, yes. That Everyone knows he sucks. It's not his fault. He's. It's not his fault for going out there and sucking when everyone knows he sucks. Yeah, that dog won't hunt. Right. It's the people who are putting him in that position. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, and then the third teed off. This one still hurts. Did you see? You saw the Preds game ended yesterday. I did see that. Yeah, that was that was heartbreaking. I was just another fucking kick to the dick. Like <laughs> the 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 Canucks I saw have the fewest shots through four games of an opening round playoff series in NHL history, and they're up three to one. It's wild. And you guys had this game one. We should be up 3-1. What was the score in the third period? Was it 3-1? to 3-1 to one with three minutes left. You pull your goalie if you're uh, Vancouver. Nashville has an empty netter. Well, they scored first to make it 3-2 with like three minutes left. Yep. Then they pull the goalie again, and Colton Sissons had the widest open net. I've the the uh, Quinn Hughes, I think it was was right near him and didn't even like he could have laid down tried to block the shot he didn't even really do that they had like accepted the game was over Mm -hmm. all he had to do was flick it into the open net hits the post they go down score again and then they score a minute into overtime it was the most sickening at least they ended it quickly in overtime i guess (laughs) what tell me this about nashville what's the deal with the catfish so the uh detroit red wings throw octopi onto the ice Mm -hmm. i forget how that started but that's been their thing forever the preds when they entered the league the red wings were like their biggest rival and so as a nashville retort basically they started throwing catfish onto the ice Mm -hmm. and uh and so it just became a thing from there so now it happens a couple times during the regular season like someone will bring in a catfish but you have to be to tape a catfish to your torso and walk into a game in December, you've got to be like really about it. Mm-hmm. So in the playoffs is when it usually happens. Yeah, I saw there was some lady that chugged out of a catfish. That uh, I believe Taylor Lewand did that a few years ago. Oh, he did. Taylor started a real so. catfish. Yeah. yeah, like whole catfish. People will like wrap them to their chest with cellophane and bring them in, and then they throw them onto the ice. Yeah. That's what's up, man. <laughs> All to blow a 3-1 lead with two and a half minutes left. Strapping a catfish to yourself, I think, is it's less gross than strapping an octopus to yourself. I feel like they're both pretty similar. I, I watched no, the octopus no, no, teacher. No, no, no. Octopuses may be more intelligent than dogs, actually. No, they are. A thousand percent. They might be, yeah. The shape of an octopus would feel worse. And what if it, like, sprayed on you? What, like ink? Yeah. I mean, they're dead. dead. This guy made me ink. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> also, can I say something? Um, six minutes ago, Christy Nome doubled, doubles down on killing her less than worthless hunting puppy. I decided what I did. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was that was her statement. Oh, that was the statement. Yeah, so she put that out. I guess maybe there was an article written about it, but she's she's not backing down. Yeah. She, she needs to adopt every dog. She needs to become like the dog whisperer. That's over. I've, I've done. I've turned a new leaf. Every you know what? Everybody else that's running for office should have to say whether or not they would shoot a dog in the head. That's the new question. Mm-hmm. Do the you- Imagine the one person like the uh the libertarian debate where they were like, Do do you think that driver's licenses should be acceptable <laughs> under yeah. law? Yeah. And and Gary Johnson was the only person that was like, well, you know, I do think maybe we should show some proficiency in every... Boo! <laughs> Somebody told me to watch yeah. the full clip of that. That I clip is have so have funny. A, Someone told us that we license were... to toast my own damn yeah. toast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody told me we should watch the entire clip because we're not representing that clip fairly. <laughs> I watched that. The, yeah. I watched the entire clip. It's, it's actually worse when you watch the entire <laughs> part of that debate where they're explaining everything. Mm-hmm. Uh... Yeah, Big T, it was a tough weekend for you sports-wise. Horrible. 
Just the worst. It was very funny when you were talking to Roddy White and you were like, total respect, total respect. <laughs> I think I was like, I Mr. Hot Rod, pleasure to be talking with you. I really don't get this pick here. It was so, <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect. It was so it. funny. You know what though? What if, what if Kirk Cousins is the answer? And what if Michael Penix is on the bench for upwards of four years? Probably more like two years is when Cousins' contract becomes not guaranteed anymore. But what if they just, what if they go to a Super Bowl? With Falcons get back there with Kirk Cousins. Then imagine how much better they would have been with Dallas Turner or Lai to Latu. Yeah. The the Falcons That that is true if if it's a top ten pick. But if you have success, then people will be like, oh, whatever. So okay, everyone agrees that this year and probably next year, it's hard to project a year out in the NFL, but certainly this year the Falcons should win the NFC South relatively easily. Yeah. Okay, so you're in the playoffs. You now well, I, the Bucks. The Falcons should win the division. The Bucks. Baker's not bad. They've All right. Say they don't the, win yeah. the. Say they don't win the division, which I think they should. You, you still make the playoffs. Yeah. Okay. So they make the playoffs. Think, so I'm you are ahead, you are now in a position where at most you need three games to break your way to be in a Super Bowl. So so your season comes down to essentially three games you have done, and you didn't use a top ten pick to make your team better. Yep. It's bad. Now, maybe in four years you make your team better. You hope, but you, you who knows? Yeah. Also, I hate the um, the Falcons didn't see themselves drafting this high again. Give me a fucking break. The Falcons will be drafting this high again pretty soon. <laughs> if, if I know anything about the Falcons, they'll be in the top 10 in short order. I can assure what, you of that. What about this? What about this, Big T? Uh, week three of the regular season. A big name quarterback goes down. Maybe it's next year. Big name quarterback gets injured. Michael Penix, he's on the bench in Atlanta. They've been saying how good he looks. Maybe you can trade him, get maybe a second round pick for him. <laughs> right. Now, now exactly. That's, now, there you yeah. go. Now we're investing. Maybe even a first, like 19th overall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Then now we're invested. Trade down 11 spots for nothing. Yeah. Your only hope is that Penix ends up being so bad that you trade him to a team and then you get their like first round pick. And then they suck so bad that it becomes like a top five pick. Bryce Young situation. Bryce Young situation. Um, and then in the second round, they traded a third round pick to move up to draft a guy that most analysts had like in the 60s on their big boards. Yeah, I'm of the mindset that if you like a guy, take him. If you're really, really liking a guy, take him. Obviously, if you have a guy that you just guaranteed a ton of money to to play that exact same position, then it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They but, traded up to get Penix? No, they traded up in the second round. Got gotcha. you. To draft a defensive tackle who probably would have been there when they were picking anyway. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Was there any like um top tier uh free agents in the NFL? Like that was looking for a deal? Uh edge rushers? Um, I don't know who was a free agent this year. On the edge? Hmm. I'm thinking they could have just spent that money because Kirk Cousins is I, you know what I mean? So if you're going to take a gamble, I would yeah. rather like shore up my defense and then and then if you're going to draft a, a number one quarterback, then go get him. That was their strategy with Kirk is you can you can have a, an okay quarterback and that team becomes significantly better. Like the, the Falcons last year with Kirk Cousins easily win that division. For they, sure. They were way better than any other team in that They would have been kind of nasty if they had Kirk Cousins yeah. and he played the whole season. Obviously. So you just need – it might be the perfect fit for Kirk Cousins because he is the very definition of I, – I would say like marginally above average quarterback. I would put him like – I think he's perfectly average. I think he's like – well, he, he's good. For his entire body of work, his entire career, I would put him right now as like the 16th best quarterback. In the NFL, perfectly no, average. No, no. The last couple seasons, he's been better. I would put him number twelve, just based on recent history. But he's always got that thing. Like he, you can't, you can't count on Kirk to put his balls on the line and make a huge play, because he's going to take the safe chance. He's a very safe guy. We're hitting singles. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with being safe. No. We're hitting singles with Kirk Cousins. Falcons did draft Braylon Trice in the third round. Uh, the draft pick from Washington, I do love. You like that guy? Yeah, I think he's going to be very good. Uh, the Commanders, I think, had a great draft. Very happy 
Jaden Daniels, the future in DC. Love that guy. I love it. I'm excited again. I thought we killed it in the second round. We did not do, here's what I like. We didn't do based on need. We did best player available because we're not a good football team. If you see a good player that you want to develop, get that guy, stock up on talent. We got uh, we got Ben Sennett, the tight end fullback from Kansas State. We got maybe my favorite new player, uh, the guy from Standstill, the guy from Michigan. He is 5'9". Oh, corner? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's solid. 5'9", 180, the perfect size for a human being. And he's just a dog out there on the corner. I see myself and Mike. Me and him, one and the same. In another life, could have been you. Could have been me. And then we got uh, Jerzon Newton. Johnny Newton is what they call him from from Illinois. He's just going to be a problem on the defensive line. Gonna That's who problem. I thought the Falcons were trading up for in the second round. Yeah, he shouldn't have fallen that deep. Yeah. Uh, Cooper DeGene went to the Philadelphia Eagles. Match made in heaven. Yeah, they're very happy about that. Very happy. Did you see um, people were making a big deal out of a reporter asked him, could he beat Caitlin Clark one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah. And he reluctantly... He didn't volunteer this information. He was asked the question. He was like, yeah, I think I probably could. And people were like clowning him for it. Did you see his high school basketball highlights? He was nasty. Disgusting. Yeah, he, he was would, really good. I, I don't understand the... Like, yeah, we can do. admit, Caitlin yeah, Clark... You, do. you understand it. I do. You're right, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin Clark is an amazing basketball player. Yep. And if she played Cooper DeGene, she would get killed. He would dunk on her. Yes. He's way taller. He can he's he can jump higher. He's faster than she is, and that's fine. She's a much better outside shooter than he is, I'm but so, for sure, he probably wouldn't give her any daylight to shoot. Is the problem? Also, what a, ball a, are they playing with? He's a he's a second round, maybe should have been a first round cornerback. I think his hips are okay and his lateral movements okay. Yeah. He'll be able to guard her pretty effectively, and she won't be able to get a shot up because he's taller and he's going to be in her face. It shouldn't be a knock against Caitlin Clark. It, it, agreed. But yes, I agree with Cooper DeGene on that. And also, I like I I would like my cornerback to have that confidence in himself. For sure. Like the best cornerbacks of all time are the ones that are in your face being like, "Yeah, I'll beat you at any sport. Like I'll, I'll I will physically dominate you." You could we tell that just... he didn't he didn't want to answer the question, too. Yeah, which it's is good cuz he knows as well, yeah. yeah. But like we have this incessant like I don't know, desire to like compare sports from to men and women and we just need to stop doing that like we just it's there's no point to do that it's it's a very obvious discrepancy in the physical attributes of men and women like why are we pretend like just, just stop it as a, as a people yeah you Does can enjoy sense? both yeah enjoy both i love watching caitlin clark that was i tell you that's the most college basketball i've watched in a long time it was watching that whole final four the women's final four all the games that shit was amazing mm -hmm. i loved watching it but like let's just stop with the men can compete with women thing. Like it's just it's pointless. Yeah. Uh anything else you're teed off about? Or is that it? No, just that Falcons was all three. Yeah, Falcons, Preds. You know. Joe Milton drafted by the Patriots. I I want nothing more than Joe to to kill it. I think Joe could hit the lighthouse. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm positive he could. <laughs> I, he should try to do that. <laughs> he could hit it with the ball still ascending. Yeah, do they have a bell up there? I think they have a bell that that you ring. I forget all the lighthouse, all the pageantry that goes along with it, but I'm pretty sure before the game they have somebody up there that rings the bell in the lighthouse. It'd be sick if he hit the bell with the football. How far you think he could throw it from on top of the lighthouse? Oh my god, he could probably throw it to out of the other end of the stadium. I think he could throw it so far that it landed on a uh, federally funded waterway. Oh, he could actually. Joe Milton could prove that the lighthouse is an actual lighthouse. Interesting. So we'll have to. Well, dude, I just want to see him just open it up. There will come a game where Drake May has to come out for a series or something, and he goes in, and it will be the most locked in I have ever been on an NFL game in my life. <laughs> what if he just looks what? good? What What if he was just waiting for for receivers that were good enough and and fast enough to use his arm correctly. And now he's in the NFL. It happens all the time, though, like with, with players who weren't that good or were okay in college, and then they excel in the NFL. I mean, I was one of them. You know what I'm saying? Like certain circumstances change, and you begin to blossom as, as a... Usually as not quarterback, though. Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy was good. He was good, but he was not 
there's a reason he was taking taken in the sure. seventh round. I don't know that happen, he's. Is what I'm saying. I don't know that he's any better in the NFL than he was in college. Oh, de- yes, Brock. He Purdy? has he has the best offense in the NFL. Brock Purdy is miles better in the NFL. I I'll give it to I'm you. I'm still that. not sold on him. Sorry, man. I'm just. He's good. Sold. He's a good player, but he was a really think, good player in I, college too. I think he. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it to you that uh, the skill set that goes along with being quarterback is typically, especially with accuracy, not something that you improve drastically on making the leap from college to the NFL. Some players can do it. Uh, Josh Allen's done it. But uh, we were talking to Mike Leach a few years ago, RIP, and he said that the one thing that you can tell, like, you don't really you don't really become more accurate. Who you are as, uh, like, a third-year college player is, generally speaking, what you're going to end up being. And I think he even said that about, like, a freshman or a sophomore in college. He's like, you don't see that much improvement in terms of accuracy. Joe's going to have to get more accurate. For sure. He's going to have to deal with that. Although it seems like, like, is he going to be their backup? Yeah, yeah. I, they have, is Bailey Zappi still there? Or is he well, gone? I saw a bunch of people saying that meant he would be gone. That they What round did Joe. he go in? Six, maybe? Fifth? No, I think he went in the sixth because it was Ooh, somewhat. The last quarterback he took in the sixth round. Oh, you're right. You're right. It was the sixth because it was six picks before Tom Brady. Just saying. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, I think Joe went 193rd and Brady went 199. That's wild. Can yeah, you man. imagine? No. I'm rooting for it. I, I like to do. I hope he No, Joe's I, I awesome want, and I would love he, for him to be successful. I I, don't, I, I accuracy I'm I'm unsure about. I think if he just takes some off and develops touch, that would be more helpful than his accuracy because I think he can put it wherever he wants to. I think he just tries to do it at such a force. That you are correct that that's a problem. I'm not as convinced as you that he can put it wherever he wants. I got you. But, right, but right. what you're describing I, is another issue, yes. Yeah, yeah. I think if he develops some touch, the accuracy will take care of itself. I was, I will say it like that. Right now, the Patriots fans are in stage one of the Joe Milton experience. Yes. It was so funny. As I've said, said the no. best place to be. Stage one is awesome. Enjoy it. Yeah, no. Now to August is... Uh, Honey and roses. Honey and roses. I <laughs> I envy milk and honey. That's what I'm. No, I like so. honey and roses. I, like I was I mean, like, what's the what's the thing that goes with honey? You can say <laughs> you say wine. Roses. You can say wine and roses. You can say milk and honey. Yeah, no, milk and honey is what I was going for. I couldn't remember what went with honey. It's gonna I was be like, roses. Wait, does good. milk go with honey? It's a yeah. saying like it's a it's milk it's all milk and honey. But I'm saying like, where's it come from? It's gonna be an origin, right? Like, have you ever tried milk with honey? Um, is it co- is it like that you put in coffee? What? I believe it's in the Bible. It just sounds delicious. It is like. in the Bible. It's the description of the country lying between the Mediterranean Sea and the Jordan River, namely Canaan. Yeah, milk and honey. It's, it just sounds comforting. It's the, don't they, wait, don't they say in the Bible, like, it's the land of milk and honey? Yes. Yeah. I went to Catholic school. Mm. I'm going to say, I'm going to start saying it's it's all wine and milk. Honey <laughs> and roses. Just watching YouTube clips of Joe Milton for the next couple months. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. He's made some outstanding throws. Yes, that 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 shit he did at the combine, where he turned around and, and shot f- a, that, the finger gun. Yeah, yeah. Like if if he if he has a successful NFL career, that will a thousand percent be on every one of his like highlight bro. That shit was that shit was gangster shit. The way he just did that shit was smooth. Bro. He I has I the swagger like to be the coolest player in the NFL if he's good. <laughs> Those are facts. He just might not be good. Yeah, I'm rooting for I'm rooting for your player. Agreed. Yep. All right, there's uh, there's something in the news. It was actually in the news in December. We didn't talk about it then, but it, uh, I guess they just rewrote about it um, earlier today. And uh, it's a weird topic, and I don't know how you guys feel about it. This company, this Danish company, invented a death calculator where you can use like chat GPT type service to try to figure out when it is you're going to die. Ooh, I want in. So they try to tell when you're going to bite the dust based on details like income, profession, residence, health history. And they said, we use the fact that in a certain sense, human lives share a similarity with language, just like words follow each other in sentences, events follow each other in other human lives. And they claim that they are correct 78% of the time. It came out in December. It's not available to the general public. So if you oh, see oh. like 
if you see a life calculator out there or a death calculator, it's made by a fake company. So it's not available yet to everybody, but they claim that they have one and it's correct 78% of the time. And there's some, there's some copycats out there that are trying to bootleg off it and get clicks. That's not the real technology. And they said that they did a study in a heterogeneous subject population of 6 million Danish people who varied in sex and age between 2008 and 2020. They determined which subjects would likely live for at least four years beyond January 1st, 2016. Uh, the sample data included in September 2012, Francisco received 20,000 Danish kroner as a guard at a castle in Elsinore or during her third year at secondary boarding school. Hermione, is it Hermione or Hermione? Harry Potter fans. Hermione. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Hermione. Wait, was that serious? I've never read Harry Potter. You've Have never, you never heard, heard that name? No, Hermione? I've never read. I, I've, I haven't either. I'm with you on this. But I've heard what? of Hermione. Hermione. I, I've heard Hermione. Of Hermione. Hermione. I I'm not. Listen, I, I haven't read the books. I haven't seen the movies. But like Hermione's like also hey, just me, a name. Neither. No, no, it's not. I've how many, heard, how many Hermione's have you run into in your life? None, but I know of the one in Harry Potter. You ever seen This is the End? Yes. Yes. Hermione tried to steal all our shit. Oh, okay. Well, I, I never, okay. I'm with you. I'm with you, PFD. I, I, I've never heard of that name outside of like Hermione. my sister. Anyways, I maybe have said she's a Harry Potter fan. I don't know. Hermione <laughs> took five elective classes. That was she was one example of the people in this in this study. Each piece of data was assigned hyper specific digital tokens. A forearm fracture was represented as S52. Postpartum hemorrhage was O72, and they used all that to calculate their approximate date of death. And using this info. Life to Vec, that's the name of the company, was able to divine it and they could figure out who would bite the dust by 2020 more than three quarters of the time. All right, so maybe the calculator, I don't know to say that it's 78% accurate is totally correct because it just said that they were they were right about who was going to die before 2020 78% of the time. They're not like giving an exact date for everybody, but it sounds like they're onto something. Uh, none of the study participants were provided their death predictions. That would be very irresponsible. Uh, they just wanted to understand what's possible and not possible to predict. But at some point in the future, there will be a death calculator. Would you use it? I'm using it right now. I saw one that says lifespan calculator. I'm on the 11th question. I'll, I'll let you know what they that's, say. That's a bootleg one. That doesn't have the same technology area. It's, it's what it is, man. I want to see what they say. Do you think, what do you think if that Brian Johnson guy did that, what it would say? Oh, for the guy that's going to live forever? Yeah. It would break it. Yeah, like how does that, do, do you think they can, they have his technology uploaded? I don't know if they have have a question in the in the study that says like, have you- Are you trying to live forever? Currently? Have you harvested your children's blood and gotten a series of plasma injections? <laughs> Who knows? Damn. They probably this don't says, have that as an option. This says I'm going to die at age 63. Oh, yeah, you shouldn't look at that. Yeah, I don't want to know that ever. No, Aaron, that's a bootleg one. That's not the right yeah, one. That's yeah, that's not real. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, that's why I want to see. It. I want to see if there's another one. I'm gonna start one of these websites, and and it'll just be like everyone lives to be 98. Yeah, and then yeah. everyone is gonna love my calculator. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's the right one. Yeah, I I would use that one. Yeah, I like not knowing things. Yeah, but if you knew, would you want to know? If no. you could know, no, no. I don't think I'd want to know either. I was. I, was, uh, I want to be surprised. I love living in ignorance. I do. I <laughs> Yo, love not knowing things. Put that for yourself. As much as I like the clip shit, yeah. Put that. One. I love ignorance. <laughs> is bliss is true. Like sometimes I just don't need to know things. I I actually think that if they could tell you when the best parts of your life are going to happen, I wouldn't want to know that either. No, I want to live life to live life. Yeah. But I I hate knowing. I like. I don't like. I hate no. I hate knowing things. I hate knowing things. <laughs> I hate the act uh, of consciousness <laughs> sometimes. I don't think that I would want to know either, but I definitely want to give the calculator a, a, a shot. You want to try the technology? Yeah, there's things. So there's things that I actively participate in that I know are shaving years off my life, right? Like, absolutely. And so I think if, if there was a death calculator, it would be like, if you're heading, if you continue to head down this path, right? So it's not a, it's not a, it's not a guarantee, but if, if you correct certain behaviors, certain habits, you can change that trajectory. 
That's how I look at it. Yeah. Question one. Are you are you a dog in South Dakota? <laughs> <laughs> Got Not holding up your end of the bargain. Rip. You click, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a pet death calculator. That that oh, sucks. No. That would be the worst. Oh, that would be lit, actually. <laughs> no. I hate it. Definitely. Just continue to survey all my friends with dogs. Yeah, but there, no there's there's a trade off when it comes to things that you do that you know are shaving years off your life, but you enjoy them. Of course, it's a, it's a sacrifice. I sacrifice the longevity of my life to enjoy the now all the time. Yeah. But then if you see a calculator, you might be like, oh, maybe I should stop having as much fun. I've, I've given myself to my 40s to clean up everything, all, all my vices. Mm -hmm. But like I, I chose to enjoy my 30s. I, I, I spent the first half of my, no, the first third of my life, no, two thirds of my life just being a fucking insane person on working out and sacrificing and not having fun, not doing. So I gave myself my thirties to relax and enjoy my life. And then in my forties, I'm going to start like, you know, getting it together, like not being so irresponsible with some of my habits. I feel like I have to make some of those choices right now. Like, what am I going to do in the last year of my thirties? Because I feel the same way. Forties. That's when you clean your shit up. Let's do it, man. Let's have a, let's have a, let's have a going away thirties like year yeah do all the, do all the stuff i'm never gonna do again i want to do hard drugs one time before because i never really done like no hard drugs i'm not doing cocaine mm -mm, don't do that but i want to do like i want to do like acid or some shit like that i want to do i want to do molly before before i before i go over the hill not heroin no i would like to do heroin actually no, don't do no that. you don't want to don't do that you don't, don't want to do, do that don't do the stuff I, I that do. has fentanyl in it possibly i, I, I want like Top high quality grade, low dosage heroin. You That's want, what I want. You want to do what Dan Rather did. What did he do? He did heroin under the supervision of a sheriff. Yeah, that would be fire. I would I would like to do a lot of drugs as a guinea pig, but like a under, you know, safe conditions, right? I'm not talking about shooting up, you know, on a Wednesday afternoon, you know what I'm saying, to get my fix. That's not what I'm talking about. Like I got kids and shit. But I do I think experimenting drugs is a is it can be a positive thing. It has been in my life, I I I, I believe. But I, there are some ones I want to try. I definitely want to try acid. I definitely want to do that. Here's an idea: an amusement park, but it's for drugs. <laughs> it's kind of fire, actually. Yo, think about this. Okay, <laughs> is that not just Six Flags? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just an amusement park. A lot of I. I don't know the last time you've been to a Six Flags. A lot of drugs going on at Six Flags. That's what I love about amusement parks and, and water parks is that it's it's literally everybody from society likes roller coasters. Like you'll go there, you'll see a family, you'll see literally like gang members doing amusement park day. You'll get kids, teenagers, young professionals. Sports, same thing. Everybody, everyone likes getting on a roller coaster. But but think about the amusement park for, park for drugs, Okay. You've got one part of it. Let's call it Weedland. And in Weedland, you've got uh, a bakery. All the brownies are free. You've got <laughs> you've got good chill music on. You've got uh, different stations you can go to. You can go to like Little Amsterdam, hang out there, have a toke. Ooh, sit. like little little Jamaica with a whole bunch of like Rastafarian music type vibes. Yeah, you got a live reggae concert. You've got stand up comedians. You can go listen to a stand up set live. I'm then, sold, then you make your way over to Acid Town, and in Acid Town they've got the Sphere, like in Las Vegas. So you get to watch a live performance in like a high def LED immersive environment, and you get to hang out there for a while and chill out. You've got uh, let's see what else could they have? Heroin I think, Town. I, I think Acid Acid Land and Mushroom Land sh should be combined into one. The hallucinogenic. Yeah. yeah. You're describing every uh, underpass on the road that this office is on from here to my apartment. No, no, no. This one's Weed Land. The next one is Heroin Town. But everything, <laughs> everything about it is tailored for that specific mental experience, and to make you as comfortable as possible. So maybe, maybe it's like you go to uh, to Tripville, right? And in Tripville, that's where they have the mushrooms, the acid, and all this uh, like visual stimulation, all this crazy shit going on and then maybe in uh like heroin village then it's just like a doctor and a bed 
and they give you a tested amount of opiates and then you you just marinate for a while on there i would not want to go to coke city coke city <laughs> would be <laughs> it would just be a rave it would just be a rave yeah that's just the brooklyn <laughs> mirage in coke city you get uh yeah you can either go to a rave or you can pitch a business idea to an investor and it's just <laughs> you can you can put yourself in the shoes of that guy from Die Hard where you just try to negotiate on behalf of a terrorist with the, the the local cops. Then then drown town. Just get drunk. Bars everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all this is actually be this is a great skit for like family guy or some shit. You know what I mean? Like it would be it would be fun to watch. All under the the care of professionals, medical professionals. You wear like a, a, a wearable piece of technology that monitors your heart rate, breathing rate, all that stuff. Plenty of Narcan. I'm glad you finally came around on drugs, man. I think I think the amusement park would be it'd be fun. I sure would be fire, actually. Again, not a drug guy, but but think about it. There's definitely some opportunities there. Uh this episode of Macrodosing is being brought to you by Steven Singer Jewelers. Mother's Day is coming up. Tell your mom that you love her. The moms in our lives put up with a ton. Some of us were angels, but others not so much. Tell your mom that you love her. Give her a call. Say hi to mom. And most importantly, don't forget her on Mother's Day. There's no worse feeling. If your, your mom woke up early every day to take care of you when you were a kid, she sacrificed. Make sure that you let her know that you love her. And you can share your love with your mom by uh, getting her a fantastic Mother's Day gift. My personal favorite is Steven Singer's 24 karat gold dipped rose in red wine. This deep, rich burgundy color rose will go perfectly with the glass of wine that she surely deserves. Steven's famous 24 karat gold dipped roses are real roses, preserved and dipped in 24 karat gold, guaranteed to last a lifetime. Make Mother's Day extra special with a gift that she's going to love and appreciate every time she sees it, every time she looks at it, every day. A luxurious red wine 24 karat gold dipped rose for just 69 bucks check out steven singer's entire collection of gold dipped roses at i hate steven singer.com order now get upgraded with one of steven singer's rose scents for free plus free shipping free personalized gift message from you and free lifetime guarantee free scent ends today exclusively and only at i hate steven singer.com all right Aaron, you got a bounce yeah i got a dip man all um, right prior to minute. take it easy we'll wrap up the show here um, but we appreciate you. Do we? We should bring back some of the voicemails. We haven't done voicemails in a while. Yeah, I feel like we've been we've been busy bees the past couple of weeks. Busy bees. Yeah, yeah. We have. We'll do voicemails Wednesday. Uh, what's that number again? Three four seven five six zero zero four zero one. All right, give us a call. Tell Please. us what you think. We'll do voicemails on on Wednesday for Thursday's show. Um, anybody have any topics they want to get into for Thursday? Were we saying something last week? That we didn't end up doing. We talked about a lot of stuff last week. Um, we'll hit the group chat with it. Yeah. We'll figure out what's going on and uh, we'll have a, a great show for Thursday. Uh, in the meantime, I hope everybody out there stays handsome, stay gorgeous, and we love you guys.